Welcome back again today for our um, scripture reading um, in Leviticus for chapter 13. We are in, well, we're on chapter 13. So I hope everyone's having a wonderful day and enjoying. I pray everyone's being safe out there. And it's pretty cold outside. I haven't been out there yet, but I um, heard it was pretty cold. But I hope everyone's keeping warm and being safe and enjoying their day too. So how's your day today? Hope it's great. Mine's um, good. It's going. So um, I'm going to get through it. So today we are on Leviticus 13. Regulations about infectious skin diseases and regulations about mildew. Yesterday, we read Leviticus chapter 12, the purification after childbirth, um, the regulations for um, women who gave birth to either sons or daughters. So um, the regulations were a little different based on if they had a son or a daughter. But um, that's what we read, um, read off on yesterday. And so today we are on Leviticus chapter 13. So this is a pretty lengthy chapter, so bear with me, but we'll get right through. So we'll get right into a word of prayer, and then we'll go right ahead and read Leviticus chapter 13. Heavenly Father, God, I say thank you so much for today. And thank you for carrying us through. And thank you for your safekeeping. Father, please forgive us and help us to carry, help us to lay all our burdens down before you, Lord, all of our cares and concerns. And Father, please forgive us of our sins and please be with us right now. God, as we are about to read your word, Father, I ask for understanding and wisdom from you, Lord. Father, let us not lean on to our own understanding, but help us to learn your ways, Father. Help us to understand what we're reading, Father God, and help us to be able to apply it to our lives. But let your word continue to be um, a blessing to us and let it continue to lead us and bless our lives each day. Thank you so much for always being with us and thank you for your word. We love you so much and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me. Okay. So Leviticus chapter 13. Regulations about infectious skin diseases. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when anyone has a swelling or a rash or a bright spot on his skin that may become an infectious skin disease, he must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons who was a priest. The priest is to examine the sore on his skin. And if the so hair in the sore has turned white and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it is an infectious skin disease. When the priest examines him, he shall pronounce him ceremonially unclean. If the spot on his skin is white but does not appear to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest is to put the infected person in isolation for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine him. And if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, he is to keep him in isolation another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine him again. And if the sore has faded and has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a rash. The man must wash his clothes and he will be clean. But if the rash does spread in his skin after he has shown himself to the priest to be pronounced clean, he must appear before the priest again. The priest is to examine him and if the rash has spread in the skin, he shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious disease. When everyone, I mean, sorry, when anyone has an infectious skin disease, he must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine him. And if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease. And, if, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. 
He is not to put him in isolation because he is already unclean. If the disease breaks out all over his skin, and so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the infected person from head to foot, the priest is to examine him, and if the disease has covered his whole body, he shall pronounce that person clean. So if the disease covers his whole body after he examines him, he shall pronounce that person clean. Since it has all turned white, he is clean. But whatever, but whenever raw flesh appears on him, he will be unclean. When the when the priest sees the raw flesh, I mean I'm sorry, the raw flesh he shall pronounce him unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. He has an infectious disease. Should the raw flesh change and turn white, he must go to the pray. priest. The priest is to examine him. And if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the infected person clean. Then he will be clean. When someone has a boil on his skin, and it heals, and in the place where the boil was, a white swelling or reddish white spot appears, he must present himself to the priest. The priest is to examine it, and if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious skin disease that has broken out where the boil was. But if, when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to put him in isolation for seven days. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is infectious. But if the spot is unchanged and has not spread, it is only a scar from the boil. The priest shall pronounce him clean. When someone has a burn on his skin and a reddish white or white spot appears, in the raw flesh of the burn, the priest is to examine the spot, and if the hair in it has turned white and it appears to be more than skin deep, it is an infectious disease that has broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious skin disease. But if the priest examines it and there is no white hair in the spot, and if if it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to put him in isolation for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine him. And if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an infectious skin disease. If, however, the spot is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, but has faded, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a scar from the burn. If a man or woman has a sore on the head or on the chin, the priest is to examine the sore. And if it appears to be more than skin deep, and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce the person unclean. It is an itch, an infectious disease of the head or chin. But if when the priest examines this kind of sore, it, is enough, it does not seem to be more than skin deep or there is no black hair in it, then the priest is to put the infected person in isolation for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore. And if the itch is, has not spread and there is no yellow hair in it and does not appear to be more than skin deep, he must sh be shaved except for the diseased area, and the priest is to keep is to the priest is to keep him in isolation another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the itch, and if it is not spread in the skin and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest shall pronounce him clean. He must wash his clothes, and he will be clean. But if the itch does spread in the skin after he is pronounced clean. The priest is to examine him, and if the itch has spread in the skin, the priest does not need to look for yellow hair. The person is unclean. If, however, in his judgment it is unchanged and black hair has grown in it, the itch is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. 
When a man or woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them. And if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rash that has broken out on the skin. That person is clean. When a man has lost his hair and is bald, he is clean. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is an infectious disease breaking out on his head and forehead. The priest is to examine him. And if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is reddish white, like an infectious skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. The priest shall promote, pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. The person with such an infectious disease must wear torn clothes. Let his hair be unkept, unkempt. Cover the lower part of his face and cry out unclean, unclean. As long as he has the infection, he remains unclean. He must live alone. He must live outside the camp. That concludes um, the regulations about the infectious skin disease. So again, we read, all, you know, there's an order of how each, um, each thing that was being, each um, uh, appearance or infectious uh, type of disease or something that was noticed upon the person's skin, um, based on what was noticed, um, the priest had to examine it. And upon examining it, determined on what he felt upon him examining it, what he felt it was, they either had to um, isolate him for seven days or and after the seven days he was um, to examine it again and then depending on what he saw he either had to examine um put him back in for seven days to isolate him but it just was based off what he saw and they based on what he saw he either determine if it was either an infectious, infectious disease or if he was just clean based on again what was what was what he what the priest had uh, was appeared before the priest on that person's skin. So um, we're going to read um, the regulations about mildew. If any clothing is contaminated with mildew, any woolen or linen clothing, any woven or knitted material or linen or wool, any leather or anything made of leather, leather, and if the contamination in the clothing or leather or woven or knitted material or any leather article is greenish or reddish, it is a spreading mildew and must be shown to the priest. The priest is to examine the mildew and isolate the affected article for seven days. On the seventh day, he is to examine it. And if the mildew has spread in the clothing or the woven or knitted material or the leather, whatever its use, it is a destructive mildew. The article is unclean. He must burn up the clothing or the woven or knitted material or of wool or linen or any leather article that has the contamination in it. Because the mildew is destructive, the article must be burned up. But if, when the priest examines it, the mildew has not spread in the clothing or the woven or knitted material or the leather article, he shall order that the contaminated article be washed. Then he is to isolate it for another seven days. After the affected article has been washed, the priest is to examine it. And if the mildew has not changed its appearance, even though it has not spread, it is unclean. Burn it with fire, whether the mildew has affected one side or the other. If, when the priest examines it, the mildew has faded after the article has been washed, he is to tear the contaminated part. So if he examines it, so if the priest examines it, the mildew has faded after the article has been washed, he is to tear the contaminated part out of the clothing or the leather or the woven or knitted material. But if it reappears in clothing or in the woven or knitted material, or in the leather article, it is spreading, and whatever has the mildew, mu what and whatever has the mildew must be burned with fire. The clothing, or the woven, or knitted material, or any leather article that has been washed and is rid of the mildew, must be washed again, and it will be clean. These are the regulations concerning contamination. 
concerning tem contamination by mildew and woolen or linen clothing woven or knitted material or any leather article for pronouncing down clean or unclean. So um, that concludes. Okay, so that concludes the regulations about mildew. So we read the regulations about the infectious diseases and how the person was to be um, treated and taken care of regarding um, skin diseases. And of course, the regulations about mildew and how the garment was to be treated and taken care of regarding mildew that was found upon this particular um, garment material. So um, that concludes Leviticus chapter 13. I know it was long and lengthy. It's a lot of information, but those were the um, regulations, um, the things that God had wanted for them. Um, the Lord wanted Moses and Aaron to see about regarding these infectious disease and mildew. So, what did you learn? If there was something you learned, please share your comments. I would love to hear your um, your comments and um, anything you would like to share, I would love to hear that. But in the time being, thank you for listening and sharing and thank you for supporting. Um, thank you for allowing me to bless you with this um, chapter reading each day that I'm able to. And uh, I just pray that we continue to go on this journey together as we read throughout the Bible um, from beginning to end. Um, still pretty early in it, but we're getting, we're moving right along. So that's the wonderful thing. Don't have that much to go in um, Leviticus, but we'll keep it moving and keep it going until otherwise. I'm not until otherwise the Lord says something else for me to do, but until then I will continue bringing you our each chapter reading each day, Monday through Friday. So um, all the knowledge is as you read, just pay attention to what you're reading and um, point out maybe some key points as what you're reading and specific details because all of this there's so many key details in all that we read and how god had moses and aaron and his sons and how he had the people to care and take care of things in a certain way that he had them take care of it there was always a reasoning behind it. Some reasons we may not know and may not understand, but there were always reasons as to how God um, ordered things and why he wanted things the way they were. And it was only for our own good. But again, when you think about, sometimes you might, you might look at it, well, that's a lie. Why would God have all this? But think about like in your own home or in your own business, you have certain rules that, you, that may set you, that may, that you may set certain boundaries or whatever within your home, your business or relationship or however. And some people may not agree or understand those particular um, terms or instructions or rules or whatever. Some people just don't understand. It's like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? You know, why I gotta be all like that? So that's a little bit how we are with God. You know, we read certain things and it's like, I don't understand that. Like, that's a lot. And I do. I, I feel it. I understand it. You know, I think the same way. Like, when I read a lot of this stuff, it's like, that is a lot. The reasoning behind it, I don't know some of the reasons behind it. But I'm praying and hoping that I will, as we're reading this, that we will soon find all that out. So, again, that's the whole point and why we are on this journey and reading it. Um, chapter by chapter, um, book by book, so that we can learn all of this and be able to understand a little more. So the questions that we may have, those questions will be answered as we go along in the Word. So that's my take on that. 
So thank you. And you all enjoy your day. Be safe out there. Don't forget to mask up, wash your hands, and social distance, and be a blessing to one another. And we'll and how be a blessing to others by loving on them, praying for them, lifting them up, being compassionate and kind, and helping others, lending a helping hand for someone that may be in need, taming those tongues, and um forgiving those who have wronged you and just do your part do your part do as god will have you do unto others okay so with that being said god willingly i will be back with you tomorrow with the next scripture i mean our next chapter leviticus chapter 4 cleansing from infectious to skin diseases and cleansing from mildew okay so I will leave you all with the word of prayer and you all enjoy the rest of your day and we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for taking care of us the way you do. And God, some things we just, we don't understand it, God, but you understand it. And some things may not be that clear to us and we may not be able to understand everything father or get the point of it god but we pray that one day or soon that you will reveal those answers to us and help us to understand some of these things god we know that you're a god of order very precise very detailed as to how things should be god and how we were to um deal with one another and take care of things as you have commanded us to so, Father, I just ask that you just please bless us in our homes, bless us at work, bless us at school, whatever it is that we're engaging in today, I just ask that you would please out us. And God, bless our minds and our hearts, God, and those things that we are burdened with, God, those things that we are bothered about, those things that are concerning to us, God. Ask God that you will please help us in those matters, Lord. Lift us up, Father. Help us to cast all those cares before you, Lord, and leave them there, Father, because we know that you're going to work it out according to your will, Lord. So bless everyone by the sound of my voice, those who are listening, Father, who will listen now and later, God. Bless them, Father. Bless their children. Bless their spouses. Bless their families, God. Bless their friends, God. And just forgive them, God, and see them all through. And please help them, Father, to allow them to get their lives in line with yours, Father. Help them, Father, to honor you, Father, and obey your word, Father. Forgive them, God, of their sins. Forgive us all. And just direct us closer and closer to you, Father. But lead us on the path, God, that you have set out for us, Lord. Deliver us from the hands of the enemy, Lord. Father, change our hearts and our minds, Father. And help us, Lord. God, we do things, we say things, we think things, God, that aren't right. And God, that's just our imperfect selves, Father. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak, God. But please help us, Father, to learn and do better. Help us to be all about your will, Lord. Not ours, but yours. Just continue to direct us and show us the way. Help us to be patient. Help us to be kind and show love as you show love towards us. Father, whatever it is we're struggling with, help us to give it to you and help us to ask for your help. But God, help us to depend on you totally, Father, with everything, Lord. Please hear us and answer me, God. Hear this prayer and answer it according to your will, Lord. Bless us all and see us through this day. Bring your healing, your comfort, your peace and deliverance upon us all. Thank you so much for hearing. Thank you, Father, for blessing. See us through this day. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. All right, everyone. So enjoy your day. Be safe. And I love you. And I will talk with you tomorrow. God willing.